Well, now to look at the other find. Uh, XT250, first thing I noticed was the fuel strainer broke off the hose inside the tank so I fished it out now I've got some replacement hose and the way you get the replacement hose to go in the hull is cut a sharp edge on it with your side cutters or a razor blade put a little bit of spit on it shove it in the hole till you can reach it with needle nose pliers or hook it out and then pull it out far enough you can hook that thing back on it and then make sure the hose is hanging down enough that that thing always lays near the bottom usually down there and then uh, have enough hose coming out you can reconnect it back to the carb I'll do that right now and that was really easy don't be afraid to pull out too much because you can always pull it back the other way alright now to pull it back through And that looks long enough. Now to cut it to length and stick it on there. Now a tiny shot of gas. And pull it and see if it starts and dies to see if the motor is good before I go any farther. Yep, motor's good. So I can take a chance and just put the gas in the tank keep priming the squeezy bulb and hopefully it runs now unfortunately with weed eaters the passageways in the carburetors are so small that 50 percent of them no matter how many takes times you take that carb apart poke them and blow them out you may never get the carb unclogged and working right the two-stroke gas just gets sticky and stuck in those passageways and you're screwed so I have so many cheap weed eaters laying around with bad carbs that look perfect and new just like this weed eater. Let's see what's going to happen. Now it doesn't matter how many times you push the squeezy bulb, all it does is suck gas out of the tank, refresh the gas in the carb and put it back in the tank. You can't flood one by doing it, by pushing it too many times. Only by leaving the choke on can you flood one. Gas is in, start pumping. If your pumping method by pushing a squeeze bulb doesn't end up sucking fuel, you better check your fuel lines again and make sure that little strainer thing is sitting in the gas. And next, well there's always the other way, just keep dumping little bits of gas in the carb, start it up full throttle until it can pump it up itself, if the carb is working right. So now without doing anything to the carb, just praying that it's good, I got it full choke and I pull it full throttle till it starts and dies. If it starts. Hmm, it did, okay. Half choke, full throttle. I think it may have been running off residual gas. Let's try adding a little bit more prime radio. Now, no choke and a little prime. Well, this one's sounding like a plug carb kind of so I'll see if it's got mixture adjustment screws first and unfortunately it's got the bastardized ones from the factory that aren't made to adjust so I'll see what I can do last step take the carb apart well a super simple redneck solution solve the day again took my cutting wheel grinder ground a slit right through all that metal and cut a screw head where it was broken off from the factory so you couldn't adjust it and see now it's adjustable so we'll see if that makes a difference to get this thing running I'll turn it out and give it lots of fuel just to see what happens other weed eaters often have little plastic caps that aren't very adjustable blocking you from turning the high and low screws so I just 
grab them with the side cutters and work the plastic off and throw it away and then you have a nice little screw head like that to adjust. So next try, I primed it again and see what happens. So I messed around with the adjusted screw and got it running right. So that means I hold it full throttle and I turn this screw till it starts to run the fastest and then I turn it out a little bit more for more fuel till it runs a tiny bit slower to make it a slight bit rich so it doesn't sm stall when you start hitting grass. And that's how you adjust the high speed screw. This one doesn't have a low speed screw, they're usually side by side. And then I just adjusted the idle mixture afterwards. And I got lucky, I got a very rare one of these weed eaters that actually had a good carb. Throw it back together and sell it for 50 bucks. My sister's looking for one. Okay, I just got done working on the second mini weed eater I garbage picked the other day. This one's the PL200. And it had the same problem, broken off fuel lines. And it had one of these plastic caps you couldn't adjust the carb mixture screw. So I broke that off. But then, of course, it still wouldn't run unless I dumped gas in it. And it turned out, of course, the typical plug carburetor like these things all have. But this time I got lucky. I just took it completely apart. Even took the screw out. Blew everything really well. Scratched the strainer screen. There's a little metal strainer screen in these carbs. And I just scratched it because they get all varnished up and that cleans them out. Blew it again. And she's working good. Let's see. Well, there's another 50 bucks and some lucky sucker will get it. Okay, I fixed the fourth one now. It was just broken fuel lines and a dirty carburetor. Let's see if she fires up. Working perfect. Gotta love garbage picking. Every day is like Christmas. <laughs> I can fix 90% of the stuff I find anyways. It's usually not killed, you know. They're, things aren't seized up. People just throw things away just because they don't start and they're cheap to buy new. That's all. <laughs>